Hello, everybody. I'm going to give you a little tutorial over Chapter 5, Verbs. And uh, there are actually two parts to this. So if you'll download the Verbs Part 1 exercise and then work along with this video, uh, it should help you figure out the difference between transitive and intransitive verbs, passive and active voice, subjunctive mood, and uh, different verbals we're going to cover. So I'm going to share with you the um, little exercise. So you can see it on the screen. Um, the first problem says, what kind of action verbs direct action toward a person or thing? Well, action verbs can either be transitive or intransitive. So if it's going to be transferring action from a subject to an object, uh, transitive is what it should be. And if it doesn't have a direct object, intransitive is what it should be. So just remember, if you have an, an action verb and it has a direct object, you know, you can ask what or whom of your action verb. And if it has a direct object, it's transitive. If it doesn't, it's intransitive. Otherwise, uh, the only other thing you can have is a being verb. So uh, what kind of verbs link to the subjects or rename describe the subject a being verb or a linking verb? They're both the same thing. So. Uh, then it says, what do we call nouns or pronouns or adjectives that complete the meaning of sentence by renaming or describing the subject? Those are called complements. Um, they are actually, they follow a being verb. So these really, these three are really all you have. Two action verbs up here, one that has a direct object, that's transitive, doesn't have a direct object, it's intransitive, or you may just have a little old being verb, am, is, or was, were, be, been, being, and all the ones like taste, feel, smell, seems, you know, that are not actions. So um, let's take a look at these and see what we have. Transitive, intransitive, linking. So number five, one, input the addresses of our most recent customers. So one is the subject. You might just want to write S-U-B-J over the top of it. Input is what he's doing. That's an action verb. So you know it's going to be transitive or intransitive. One, input, input what or whom. Input addresses. So addresses is a direct object. There's actions being transferred from one to these addresses. Okay, so it's obviously a transitive verb. Okay, Jeff ran along the dirt path back to his home. Jeff's the subject. What do you do? Ran. There's your action verb. So again, I know it's going to be transitive or intransitive. You may not know that along the dirt path, along is a preposition. So that there's a prepositional phrase. You can throw that out or just mark it out. To his home is also a prepositional phrase. Just mark it out. Back tells where, so um, it's an adverb. So all you have is subject verb. You don't have a direct object. If you don't have a direct object, intransitive. Uh, it might have been Jessica who called yesterday. It's a subject. Might have been is a verb. The main verb is always the last verb in the verb phrase. So Ben is the main verb, and Ben is a being verb. So that's all it is, just being, you don't have to tell me if it's transitive or intransitive. It's just a state of being. There's no transfer of action. Uh, customers crowded into the store at the beginning of the sale. Customers, subject, what they do, crowded, that's an action verb. Here's a prepositional phrase. Here's a prepositional phrase. And here's a prepositional phrase. So three prepositional phrases. So you can throw all that stuff out and all you have left is customers crowded. So it doesn't have a direct object, it's intransitive. Okay, Sherry was a consultant on the software conversion project. Sherry's the subject, was a being verb. So again, you don't have to worry about any of the rest. Consultant is just a noun complement. So just an old being verb. And then the last one here, Levi Strauss, first sold pants to miners in San Francisco. So here's your subject, Levi Strauss, what do you do? Sold, action verb, sold what? Pants, got a transitive verb. Okay, so hopefully you're picking up the, the difference between transitive, intransitive, and being. Uh, 11 through 15 deal with voice. So remember, active voice is when the uh, subject does some kind of action. Passive voice is when the subject doesn't do an action. So the text message was not received by Mark. The subject of this sentence is the text message, right? The message. And did the message get up and do anything? It doesn't. So passive. Passive. 
12. Our departmental report must be completed by 5 p.m. I'm talking about the report. Remember, we say who's speaking, who's being spoken to, who or what's being spoken about. We're speaking about the report. That's our subject. So report must be completed. Completed what? Well, this is a prepositional phrase. So we have no direct object. And so if we were looking for transit or intransitive, we'd be intransitive. But in this case, the report, we're looking for passive or uh, active on this. So the report didn't get up and do anything. So again, it's passive. Uh, employees, our employees change their passwords frequently. Our employees, they're doing something, right? Change. Our employees change. That's active. Beginning next week, Sherry Bradford, subject, will authorize that she's doing something. Active. Uh, the courts make decisions each day that affect the lives of all Americans. Courts are the sub that's the subject of the sentence. What do they do? They make active. Okay, so ask yourself, is the subject doing something? If it is, it's active voice. If it's not, it's uh, passive voice. All right, let me take you through the subjunctive uh, mood for a minute. Because um, a lot of people have trouble with this. I want you to use was if something is possible. I want you to use were if something is impossible. Okay, this is subjunctive were. So if I was you or if I were you, I would complete my degree first. Both sound pretty good. If I was you, if I were you. So you need to use the subjunctive mood because I can never be you. It's impossible. So I need to use were. If I were you, it's always if I were you, not I was you. If Mr. Greer was in the office yesterday, I didn't see him. Could he have been there? Sure. So I just didn't see him, so it was possible. So I'm going to use was. That's the difference in, in using the subjunctive mood and not. Okay, 18. Uh, one of the st uh, stockholders moved that a committee uh, be or is formed to study the problem. Okay, when you see moved in this case, let me just change my color here. Moved, recommend in this one or suggested or suggest. Okay, when you see these three things, I want you to use the subjunctive be. So, the, one of the stockholders moved that the committee be formed, that a committee be formed. Um, government officials recommend that all homes be stocked with emergency supplies. After consulting his supervisor, our manager suggested that all employees be given three week vacations. So when you see those words, that should tip you off to use the subjunctive be. Okay. Uh, number 21, here's uh, some problems with gerunds. Uh, why don't we just do 21? 22 is not as easy to see, but passing the examination is important. What's the subject of the sentence? Well, passing the examination, passing is a, it looks like a verb. It looks, the ing on the end makes it look like it's a verb but it's a, a verb being used as a noun in the sentence. So that's called a gerund. Uh, and the same thing's happening here, criticizing. Do you think you're criticizing the manager had anything to do? Criticizing had, so subject verb. So criticizing, in this case, it's a gerund. It looks like a verb, but it's used as a noun. By the way, if you use this, you have to use a, if you have something in front of it, it has to be a possessive either a possessive noun or, in this case, a possessive pronoun. So, all a gerund is is an ing word. It looks like it's being used. Uh, it looks like a verb, but it's being used as a noun. All right, and the last section here uh, has to do with verbals. You'll see this one has to get. To get is an infinitive, to plus a verb, and it's starting at the first of the sentence. Uh, this one has driving erratically down the street. Driving is not a subject here, so it's not a gerund. This is what they call a, a dangling participle. This is a present participle, and notice it's dangling off the first of the front of the sentence. The actual sentence is here, the driver was stopped, you know. So uh, that is a participle. And then in this one, you have to work. You can see it better here, to work. And again, that's an infinitive. So let's just take a look at each one of these. To get to the meaning quickly, a shortcut was taken by Mike. To get to the meeting quickly, Mike took a shortcut. Whenever you have a verbal, like we do here, I need to say who was getting to the meeting quickly right after the verbal. So notice that Mike is right after the verbal on the second one. 
So that's the correct way to write that sentence. Uh, on this one, driving erratically down the street, the driver. The driver needs to be the one driving erratically down the street. This one says driving er erratically down the street, the officer. Well, I hope the officer wasn't the one driving erratically. So this should be the correct one here. The driver is driving er erratically, and it's right up against this dangling participle, which is correct. And then I plan to, after my visa is issued, work in Japan for a year. After my visa is issued, I plan to work in Japan for a year. To work, again, is an infinitive, two plus a verb. And this is the correct way to do it, two plus a verb. The old rule is never split the infinitive. So you see how they split the infinitive by putting this stuff in the middle. Don't do that. Okay, so hopefully that helped you with uh, the first part of this chapter. There will be a second part I'm going to upload so you can get some more practice. But uh, transitive, intransitive, and being. If it has a direct action verb and has a direct object, it's transitive. has an action verb doesn't have a direct object, it's intransitive. If it just has a being verb, it's just being. Um, so hopefully that's more, hopefully it's easier for you to pick out now. Active voice, if you have a subject that's doing something, it's active. If the something's being done to the subject, it's passive, it's backwards, okay? And then the subjunctive mood, use were if it's not possible. Use be if it's a motion, mood, a recommendation or suggestion. Um, and then gerunds at the end and getting your, uh, whatever your subject is, close to your verbal. Okay, I'm going to stop right there. Uh, hopefully uh, that helped you a little bit. And uh, if you have problems with any of those and want to ask a question, just email me.